Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shireen and welcome back to our initiative, What After Dentistry? Now, as you all know, we are a team of dentists with a healthcare management background and we are here to guide you and make you aware of the various career options in dentistry and healthcare. Today, we have with us Dr. Akruti Choksi, a dental surgeon from Mumbai who practiced dentistry for two years and then followed her passion and love for animals to become India's first equine dental technician. She went to New Zealand to learn equine dentistry from one of the finest equine dentists in the world, Warwick Burns and his team. This training helped her to work on different breeds of horses. She has also upgraded her skills in the field of equine dentistry from the International Association of Equine Dentistry, which is in the US. Dr. Akruti has been working for more than 12 years now in the field of equine dentistry, and she is here to share her story of following her passion and pioneering the world of horse dentistry in the country. We welcome you, Dr. Akruti, and we are really excited to you know, talk about this amazing field of dentistry, the equine dentistry. Thank you so much. It's a very big honor to be here. Thank you. So, uh, you know, from a dental surgeon to an equine dentist, this is something like out of the blue topic. So how did you came to know or how did you, you know, you got aware of this particular field when people have not even thought about this? So it's a little bit of a long story. I actually did not want to be uh, a dentist by profession. I wanted to actually be a vet or a child psychologist. And, uh, you know, at that time, my parents thought that this is not a very great, these are not very great career options for women, especially, you know, if they have going to have families later and stuff. So, um, you know, they put me in dentistry thinking that, you know, that's the best, it's a good, good option for a girl in India to manage, you know, family, to manage profession, all of that. Uh, but I think, um, you know, this was, uh, this was just going to happen because, you know, I mean, I just could not do anything that was not my passion. So I, I did uh, school and I got good at it. And, uh, you know, I, I really like the part that dentistry is art and science. So I'm, I'm very good with my hands. I like to do things with my hands. I like to work with my hands. So I loved carving. I loved all of that. But um, I also was a little bit of an animal activist uh, throughout my life. And uh, especially more than anything throughout the BDS years. Um, I used to always be, you know, uh, adopting animals off the, off the street or riding for you know, horses that are mistreated in India or, you know, going to the BMC offices and the police stations to make sure that, you know, there's no cruelty to, uh, towards these equines, um, you know, those Tangawala ponies and all that. And um, so, yeah, I, I also uh, practice Buddhism. So I have like a spiritual kind of um, inclination. And, uh, you know, in, in this, I've been taught that you should always probably, you know, you, you want to do and nothing is impossible. So I knew that there is a field like equine dentistry, but I was not aware that one could just do it, you know, uh, not being a vet. But when I researched outside, like when I finished, uh, you know, BDS and when I researched uh, about this particular uh, field, you know, I realized that one can become an equine dental technician uh, with a little bit of hands-on training. And uh, I just went for it and I just made sure that I followed my dreams. I think that's amazing because this is a very, very brave and a courageous step, you know, that you've taken. It's not easy to shift your uh, core profession from, you know, practicing on humans to, de to now practicing on horses. So I think it's really great to, uh, to get to know that, you know, people are like this and, uh, you know, there are people like this who, who just follow their passion and dreams, whatever they want to do. So I think I sh it's really great to have you today on our platform. So uh, what were your reactions? I'm sure that, you know, your friends and your family would have reacted in a way like, uh, why equine dentistry? So how did you, you know, convince them that? So um, I think I've been very lucky uh, to have very, very supportive parents. Also, I feel that I'm uh, very like spiritually, I think I had a very uh, uh, clear thought, you know, saying that this is something I really want to do. So I'm going to do it no matter what. And it, it's, it may be tough, but I will still do it because my heart is in it. And um, 
so like my parents were completely supportive and they said that you know if this is what you want to do then we're supporting you and uh, it was actually the year of a, a big recession that was happening the, day, the year 2008 when i went and did equine dentistry but uh, you know nevertheless my dad and my mom they completely supported me and said you know whatever it takes you go and do this it's fine so yes they they were supportive yes they did think it was a little funny that horses need a dentist when did this happen or you know whenever i used to tell my friends they used to be like wow that's really niche and and whatever so mostly it was like mixed um you know mixed sort of uh feelings but mostly i think people were very supportive that's great that's amazing um so please tell us more about this field like if somebody wants to pursue or wants to become an equine dental technician how should they start about it and are there any courses in india or you have to do it from abroad so uh, if uh, someone wants to become an equine dentist i think abroad uh, new zealand australia the us i think it's very very simple uh, you don't have to do anything you know related to even dental or anything you know you just have to be either a vet or in certain states you are allowed to just do a uh, dental uh, equine dental technician course so it's very simple um there i mean at that time i chose the longest course which was in new zealand and the most comprehensive course um you know which was not available in in the us for me according to what my you know uh, expectation was and um, yeah so it's a very simple process but i think also one should be a little uh, well versed with animals with horses you know they should be a little well versed with the psychology of horses and you know the whole uh, you know the whole uh, body language and all of that that's very important okay so uh, uh, just for for the information a student who's in 12th standard taken pcb as the main subject can they directly go for equine dentistry or they have to study veterinary you know science first and then they can go so it depends on different countries have different rules uh, you know different states for example in the us have different rules so it depends on where you're staying and according to that you have to find out what the rules are in terms of you know whether you need to be a vet or you can be an equine dental technician so it's a pretty complicated uh, process right now but uh, hopefully that should kind of get better in the future i think that's fair enough and what's the total cost and time duration if you could just tell about your course that one that you did okay so uh, the course that i took was uh, the course that i took was um, you know three months uh, was like the the you know theory part of it and three months was the practical part of it and because i was, uh, was already a dentist and you know i was already aware of most of you know the dental uh you know nomenclature and the the basic enamel dentin pulp cementum sort of thing although horses have a very different structure and a different thing completely the basics of all mammals remain the same so i i could kind of do this way faster and it made it just made so much more uh you know sense for me as a dental surgeon so yeah so okay. theory was 6 months and it was yeah so and uh... also if you could tell us what are the pros and cons if somebody wants to pursue this course again it depends on where you are living so i don't know for example in the uae what are the rules and norms but um i think this is definitely a new subject that people should um, think about very clearly and uh, you know for example i am in talks in india uh, you know uh, with certain colleges or uh, or schools that can you know integrate both like veterinary as well as dentistry because you know even for small animal dentistry you know you require some sort of know how to be able to treat them so right now uh, that is something that one can look at but um, yeah i think it's again where you stay is what is going to you know be applicable to you so for example in india there is right now no um, way to do this unless you are a vet uh, so please tell our audience like what is the difference between a veterinary dentist and an equine dentist you know how are these two different like you said uh, as of now in india it's the veterinary dental you know the veterinary uh, doctors only they start treating the uh, dental ailments of horses but how different is it so um, in india right now there is no formal education on equine dentistry uh yes vets are doing uh, small procedures in small animals such dogs cats you know i do get requests from vets to 
come in and do some scaling or you know a tooth extraction or filling maybe uh, i know in certain countries people love the fact that they want to put uh, you know these jewels on the canine teeth of their dogs uh, you know the stuff that we do in our clinics as well but um, but i think so uh, in india per se we are not right now uh, having any special courses so i am working with a couple of people to make sure these kind of courses who are you know coming out of school um you know straight if they want to work on the race course or if they want to work with courses um so veterinary dentistry will be very different um because equine dentistry is a different veterinary dentistry so for example i know that i have done some research on wildlife dentistry as well so uh, for that i think there are special schools abroad that vets go to to do root canals and stuff for wild you know the big cats and you know, all of that so that's a completely different subject and equine dentistry is like different because their teeth are very different than our teeth so their teeth continuously erupt yeah so uh, in layman's terms they can continuously grow so they need to be rasped or they need to be balanced every year at least once a year so that is the difference between so i'm not usually doing fillings and cavities and root canals and those kind of things i'm usually doing the balance balancing of it so that's the difference between veterinary uh, dentistry and equine dentistry okay so now it's been like 12 years you've been practicing equine dentistry how has been your journey it's been really good um it's challenging yes because obviously you know being a pioneer in one field is not easy uh, there was uh, you know people that would laugh at me and say that you know this is never going to work in india and pack your bags and leave you know this is totally going to work in an advanced country your people don't do their own teeth work you know you can't expect them to take their horses to a dentist but i'm very proud to say that you know things have really changed i have actually done a lot of uh, education work i've i've gone like you know behind the scenes a lot to be able to educate people to share knowledge to make them understand that you know if you have horses then it's a very normal thing to do um, to get their teeth done is the basic care that you could provide for a horse so i mean i can't say that i have a dog and i don't want to take it to the vet so i don't want to take it out for a walk right i mean i rather not have a dog so in the same way i've have, have had to really um, you know teach the you know or share this sort of knowledge with the horse owner saying that you know the, your horse's teeth actually make or break that horse you know in terms of the racing polo uh, just even breeding purposes whatever so the teeth is how the horse kind of um, starts eating and from that eating the entire well-being and the health of the horse is connected also the performance is connected so yes it's been a uh, it's a been a huge journey um, but very satisfying and now people see the great difference that dentistry can bring uh, you know to their horses and they're very very glad to get, get it done so yes now it's it's now becoming like a very sought after you know thing yeah i i'm sure it would be and in future also as in when you know uh, people come to know more and more about it they will be as yes, uh, coming up with their horses of course to you and if anybody else if they uh, want to be an equine dental technician in india uh, later on maybe after you know they see your the session today that we are having so maybe anyone who gets inspired and gets motivated so um, you know we are just curious to know what kind of procedures or treatments do you do on horses how easy is it is to control a horse while you are doing any kind of a procedure so i was very lucky in new zealand um, you know i chose new zealand exactly for that reason where um, you know i saw that they are conducting that course completely like you know like in the open you know in barns in you know people's backyards and paddocks and all of that so uh, new zealand is a country where everybody every middle class person every normal person has a couple of horses at least so um it's like you know us having dogs it's very normal for everyone ha- to have dogs in india for example so um so in new zealand i mean people were um, they're very conscientious they they uh, they're very like you know animal friendly i mean their whole life revolves around like you know farming or having you know uh, their like cattle or you know sheep or horses and all of that so um i think i was very lucky that i was in this uh, course i was taught uh, from scratch 
I did not know too much about horse riding and, you know, uh, you know, in a very technical manner, I do, I did know how to ride a horse. I've been, my dad put me on a horse as soon as I was a year old, I think. So I always loved horses, but um, technically I was a complete newbie to this, you know, so it was a good thing. Actually, Warwick was very, uh, very happy with the fact that I'm, I'm relatively a clean slate. So um, I think I wouldn't say horse dentistry is difficult. I think it's very easy if you know how to like, you know, be in sync with a horse. And I was very lucky to have an amazing teacher who taught me exactly how to approach a horse, exactly how to make friends with it. Um, I Today for dentists, I would say that, you know, it's very much like pediatric dentistry. You know, you don't scare the child as soon as it he or she walks into the clinic. You make friends with that child. You make it under, You make them understand that you know you're not going to get hurt. You're you're fine and everything is okay. And the child is more than happy to you know oblige and the child is more than happy to please you. So I think the horses are the same. Uh, they also get that you know this is my friend and you know this is not going to hurt. So uh, the the stuff that I do with horses is that. Um, so, for example, babies, like, you know, the younger horses, when they come into racing, they have primary teeth that are, you know, ready to be exfoliated. So when they have the bit in their mouth and then the jockey is riding the horse because the bit is connected to the reins and the jockey's sitting on the horse, right? So many a times when they have, um, you know, a sensitive mouth, it's because their baby teeth or primary teeth are exfoliating and they're in pain. So, you know, for example, the jockey would come and tell me that, okay, you know, when we're trying to do this, the horse is getting really upset and is rearing up or whatever. But, and when you open the mouth, it will be as something as small as that. Um, you know, there are a few extractions that I need to do of wolf teeth, which are rudimentary little teeth right in front where the bit is there. So again, that is something that I have to do. So extractions is one thing. There is uh, rasping, which I said that, you know, their teeth continuously grow and become very sharp. So the, the, the mouth gets cut in the inside or, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, certain parts of their teeth grow out longer than the other. So they become imbalanced. So they can't eat properly. They can't chew properly or the bit is not uh, comfortable for them. So I have to rasp these teeth down and balance them with hand clothes or hand tools or power tools. And, uh, you know, there are lots of, I mean, I have done partial, I would say um, pulpotomies, not pulpectomies, pulpotomies for horses, because um, I'm yet to find, uh, you know, root canal equipment for horses in India. Um, but in New Zealand, we did do partial pulpect pulpotomies and um, we did do fillings as well. Uh, I have done a couple of, you know, uh, you know, like the fillings. Um, there is, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, like balancing, making sure that they're eating okay, that kind of stuff. But not very day-to-day -day, like dentures and implants and, and uh, fillings and scaling. So, yes, yeah, scaling also, we do scaling for them as well. I think that's amazing. So, yeah. So, uh, when you pursue this course in equine dentistry, did your BDS knowledge, the theory and the, you know, all the knowledge that, though you have said it earlier, but we would just like to know that, did this help you in acquiring the, uh, you know, theoretical knowledge on equine dentistry? Absolutely. I think uh, it was very, very required. If I didn't, if I was not an, a normal dentist, I would not be here. So I, I owe a lot of gratitude to that. Uh, you know, there are, there's always a reason why you're doing something in life. And I really believe it. And uh, for that reason, BDS for this in my life. And, and uh, definitely it gave me much more understanding than the rest of the students or the rest of the people there, because I, I already had a very big background in you know, dental surgery. So that was very, very required for me. So and um, honestly, my teacher was very gracious because, you know, he did, he had, I think, one other student from a different country, from New Zealand itself, who was also a DDS. And he was also, he's also an equine uh, dental technician. So, and he does both there. Um, so uh, I think that is something that's, uh, it really helped both of us. And it also helped the class and the teacher because then we were able to kind of give him a perspective of the human aspect of it and then, you know, um, try and see how we can modify it for the horse. Right, right. Absolutely. So uh, what is the current, you know, scope and opportunities in this field if somebody wants to practice this in India? Uh, well, in India, um, you know, I feel that if there is a will, there's a way. And uh, currently, although there 
there are a few challenges for me. Uh, I feel that uh, in the future, I'm working on, you know, probably getting a equine dentistry school or, you know, some sort of courses and classes which can combine veterinary and dentistry together. Because very honestly, like we were taught, uh, you know, first two years or three years of our, uh, you know, BDS years by also MBBS doctors, right? Uh, although, you know, we had anatomy, physiology, you know, all of that biochemistry, we were taught by MBBS doctors because somewhere I think these, all these fields are linked. So I feel that in the future, we should look at something like this being, uh, you know, like uh, linked and connected so we can help each other out. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, uh, right now, I don't know, but like very soon, hopefully in the future, I can come about with something that uh, can give people a bigger opportunity to do this. Yeah, I think that's great. That's, uh, that's you know, it's very motivating also because when you do any any kind of you're very specialized or niche kind of uh, you know career options then yes it does take time because initially it might be a struggle but then over a period of time we do see that you know it becomes a good opportunity not just for that one person who's practicing but then uh, they make sure that you know the others who are coming in this field uh, it's it's easier for them to practice and do whatever they want to do in that particular field so yes rightly said uh, one last tip or advice that you would like to you know share with the dental fraternity or the dental students graduates that they should follow so i really feel that you know one should not blindly follow everybody else or one should not not blindly just follow one person i really feel that you know uh, each person is unique and each person is an individual and if they have the right strength of mind and right strength of heart, then they can do anything that is, you know, like seemingly impossible as well. Because honestly, nothing is impossible. It's just that if you keep your heart and mind in the right place, then you could do anything that you put your mind to do. So, yes, I think uh, that. I think it has nothing to do with dentistry or no, de like it has nothing to do with dentistry, but I think it has the power of your mind and your own attitude towards your life is the most important, I feel. Yes, I think that's absolutely correct. The way she's put it, you know, very uh, correctly that you need to follow what you think is right and not just follow what everybody around you is doing. Do what you want to do. And I'm, I'm sure uh, you will success, you know, you will get success and you will reach to the point there wherever you want to reach. So it's very, very important that you listen to yourself first and then, you know, you listen to others what they are talking about. So, Yeah. So thank you so much, Dr. Akriti, for, you know, uh, sharing all the insights that are required for people to know that there is a field by the name of equine dentistry and you can become an equine dentist if you want to and if you want to, you know, prosper your love for the animals that you have. So thank you very much for coming on our platform today and sharing about this amazing field. Uh, I'm sure the audience would get, mo uh, you know, motivated. They would get inspired by this field and they will start learning more about this field. Thank you so much. I think you guys are doing a great job and a really good initiative to bring something new so that people's minds open up to something different. And I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And all the audience, if you've been listening to our session today, thank you so much for patiently listening to us. Uh, if you have any questions related to equine dentistry, you can always reach out to Dr. Akuti. I will mention her profile in the description so you can check that out. And if you have any other questions related to dentistry or healthcare, do let us know in the comment section. We'll be happy to help. So I will see you in the next video. And before that, please subscribe, like and share this video. And of course, I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye and good luck.